My name's Dr Nick Lane. I'm in the Department of Genetics, Evolution and Environment at University College London. And I'm interested in the ways in which complicated life, complex life arose on Earth. In fact, there's a big hole right at the centre of biology because complex life arose on our planet only once in four billion years of history. We know that because all plants, all animals, algae, fungi and so on, everything you can see, everything which is uh, important to us on this planet, shares a basic cell structure. And that cell structure, there's so many points in common that it's very plain that it all had a single ancestor. And that single ancestor arose once, somehow, from the bacteria. And it's very different to bacteria, to, to prokaryotes, which are very simple, very small cells. And they arose perhaps three and a half, maybe four billion years ago. And they've hardly changed in that whole time. We can find fossils four billion years old, or three and a half billion years old, of bacteria that look the same as bacteria today. So I'm interested in what it was, what event led to this transformation of possibilities from the very simple, morphologically simple bacterial cell to the enormously complex uh, eukaryotic cell, which gave rise to all these different uh, explosion of, of, of organisms. I think that the, the, the reason for this is that there was a very unusual event between two bacteria, perhaps uh, two billion years ago, something like that, where one got inside another one. It was a chimeric event to, to, to give rise to some kind of fusion of two cells. Now this kind of thing happens very, very rarely between bacteria, but we know of the odd example. And I think that this gave rise to this huge uh, potential. And the reason relates to the way in which bacteria breathe. I think they, they breathe across their, usually they breathe across their skin, effectively, across the outer membrane. And that limits how large they can get because uh, the larger they get, the less surface area they have in relation to their volume. And the only way out for them is to internalize their breathing inside. And the problem with that is that they, they require genes to control it. And the bigger a bacteria is, the more copies of its genome it has. And that's a tremendously laborious uh, problem for it. They simply can't get around it. And Having one cell inside another cell suddenly gives rise to this state where you're able to expand up in size while being stable as a cell and while having lots and lots of energy. So that's the difference really as I see it between the bacteria which are limited by energy and the eukaryotes which are able to expand and swell and accumulate DNA and they're not limited in energy. And that gives also a, a second problem which is that all eukaryotes have to have all these multiple copies of a small genome, a tiny genome, the mitochondrial genes, to support their state, to, to, to exist at all. They have to have an interaction between these genomes. So to talk about a single genome in a cell is not right. There are two genomes in every cell. And the way in which they interact with each other is critical for the way that all complex life works and underpins, uh, for example, why we get old, why we age, why we have sex, why there are two sexes instead of everybody could be one sex, um, problems with fertility, why uh, cells commit suicide, all these kind of questions can be explained quite simply in terms of the requirement for having two genomes in every single cell. So I think this is why complex life arose only once on earth as a result of a unique fusion between two bacteria two billion years ago and this explosion then after that, giving rise to all complex life on Earth, along with their very peculiar properties, can be explained quite simply in terms of the interaction of these two genomes.